Um, and welcome everyone. Actually, sorry, I got an alert that it's being recording. Um, I actually think that Laura just, uh, she was able to join uh, recently, but um, I'll just give a quick introduction on myself. Uh, my name is Lloyd Gutierrez. I'm the mentor protege technical lead here at IBM. Uh, so I work with Laura on different um, contracts, on different projects with different protégés, uh, just helping in support of those protégés and their efforts. Um, and Laura, are you able to come off mute? Yeah, good morning. Can everybody hear me? Yes, good morning, Laura. Thank you. you you're welcome. And um, you, you, the floor is yours, so please go ahead. Yeah, I was I was, you know, trying to see where the mute was. Sorry. Um, so good morning, everyone. And thanks, Loida, for the introduction. Um, <clears throat> as Jasmine says, and first I want to thank you, Jasmine, for the invitation by IBM uh, for this meeting. Um, again, my name is Laura Sucre, and I am the IBM program manager for the Department of Defense Mental Protege Program, being IBM for a little over 18 years, um, working in this program for over 16 years now. Um, obviously, you know, supporting small businesses across the board with IBM. And we can, um, Loida, since you're chairing, can you go ahead to the next slide? Um, so what we do, <clears throat> this presentation is informal. Um, we uh, This is what we present to small businesses that reach out to IBM, um, inquiring about the DOD mental project program, uh, which is unique, um, very different from any other programs out there. It's different from the uh, SBA programs and um, the civilian agencies that have, like the DHS have a mental project. This is completely independent. And um, it, again, it's very unique and is uh, owned and managed by the Office of Secretary of Defense. Um, Congress. So this is not funded by the Department of Defense budget. Just wanted to uh, put that out there. Um, this is a, a important information about the program. So again, IBM has been in this program since 1997. That what you see there is a summary uh, of the work we have done. Uh, we also participating at the DHS. That's a, another team who handles that. Um, and then we have won the non peri Award numerous times for our outstanding uh, mentor project relationship with our proteges. Next. <clears throat> um, this is something, uh, this slide is a very key and is again, something that we share with any small business that is looking to establish a relationship with the mentor protege. Obviously IBM is not the only mentor. Um, some of you may know, you know, we have, there is Raytheon, SAIC, Kaki, uh, Booth Island, you know, major um, contractors, we are all participating and it's voluntarily, we participate voluntarily in the program. So when uh, when we talk to small businesses that um, they say, well, I want to be part of the program, uh, we usually recommend that a company go out there and um, educate themselves, not just about the program, but also about the mentor they're reaching out. What is the business of the mentor? What do we do? Um, and how you can support the business of the mentor and how we can support you. Um, the agency, what, you know, what are the agency's um, requirements, needs, problems that you see that you may come and say, I have a solution. And, and I'm going to talk about that later uh, with respect to the, this program. So we, we talk about this and this slide is being shared, uh, even with the agencies. Actually, the, the, this was their idea. So we're trying to make sure that from the very beginning, um, there is a clear understanding of what the program is all about. So we, uh, this program is to provide um, technology transfer to proteges that have a unique solution, a product, and we, you know, in support of the warfighter or a DoD uh, mission. Um, again, it's technology transfer. Uh, that's in IBM. That means um, IT consulting services. We have, you know, high level. Um, IT engineers, 
that depend on what solution the protege has, they will come and provide guidance and support to the protege. Um, it's again, it's a co-creation um, program. We identify customer challenges, and then we obviously with with the protege, we put the solutions together. Um, <clears throat> it's again, we we just you know, base this program in the solution that the protege have. So the protege is the one who needs to come with that solution and said, here is a problem that I have identified for my client. And here is a solution that I'm being putting together or I already have it. I just need to close gaps in order to uh, offer that solution to, you know, whether it's the Department of the, uh, the Air Force, the Navy, Army, uh, in the Intel community, which is a little harder, but, um, that's that's what the program is all about. <clears throat> and it's not, well, it's pretty self-explanatory there. I'm not gonna go through the list, but you can get the picture. Um, one, one important message is this is not a social program. Uh, it's not <clears throat> for the startups, businesses, or staff augmentation businesses that are just, you know, putting bodies on on, on the ground. Um, that That's not what this program is about. <clears throat> so going back to the requirements, um, again, these requirements have been collecting in the past 18 years of working with the agencies and seeing what work, what doesn't work, um, and to make the programs, you know, a success. Because this is more for the protege than the mentor. But if the relationship fail, everybody's gonna get a black eye. You know, it's it's you know, the mentor obviously <clears throat> it's the small business that is gonna have, you know, a bad reputation with the agency and the sponsor agency as well, because uh they have to obtain funding, as I said earlier, from OSD. So each agency goes to OSD, uh, the ones that participate. So they require the um the funding from them. So if they don't you know, if the, if the contract agreement fail, then they're going to have, you know, issues with OSD. So these requirements are very, um, I mean, we, we we keep at the top and is that the small business must have a product or solution that needs to be enhanced or complete through the mental project program and uh, technology transfer, uh, whether it's, you know, through IBM, in this case, IBM IT consulting, or you know technical training or you know that kind of stuff. The president CEO should be and must be one hundred percent committed and in absolutely understanding of the requirements. And because at the end, the CEO is going to sign an agreement. It's it's a formal agreement document where uh, he or she will you know um, commit to the program and dedicated resources that the program needs in order to be successful. Uh, we also require companies that are obviously a single owner, sometimes small businesses are, we understand they are um, built by two, maybe three, you know, owners, you know, so co-owners, and that's fine as long as it is a small business, um, no under investment firms, consortiums, or that kind of um, business umbrellas. Um, Get to have a designation, either a service sales veteran owned small business, veteran owned, women owned, disadvantage, hops on, minority owned. And we also require the letter, the certified letter, either for the SBA or the VA, in the case of SDV or SB. Uh, past performance, um, looking for prime or subcontractors with DOD uh, or the Intel community, preferably. Um, the small business should have at least minimum of between 50 and 20 full-time employees, not 1099s. Um, and this goes, you know, in the headquarters, people that do business development, um, human resources, sales, uh, marketing, um, office management. Um, so those are not resources that are deployed into a, a client base, you know, day to day. Um, we also look for about, about five, seven years um, in business, which, you know, help to prove, you know, financial instability and continuity. Uh, relationship with IBM is preferred, but not, not required. Same thing for the small business innovation research. Um, so this is about the, um, how the, the, 
this, those requirements tied up to the investment that the small business is going to make. The program have great benefits and it's all about the protege. This is all about the protege. This is not about the mentor. However, you know, as with anything, um, the small business has to make an investment and that investment comes in terms of the resources. And that's why it's so important to have a number of resources that can be dedicated to the program. It's not a full time, but you're going to uh, dedicate resources to this activity because it's formal and it's going to be represent overhead um, for the small business. So when you look at that list, <clears throat> the technical staff is the technical people that are going to be working with our technical um, engineers. And that is an average of 300 to 350 hours a year, right? Um, also, there is uh, technical training, business training, and you have to have the resources to send those tr uh, resources to train. Um, whether it's 50, 20 hours uh, per year, it all depends on how many, um, you know, the, how large the training portfolio could be. Another benefit <clears throat> that Prodigy is obtained through the Mentor Prodigy program is to obtain the CMMI or the ISO appraisals. And again, that's kind of a, uh, for some of you, maybe you have it or, you know, intend to have it, you know, that's kind of a, a big effort, not just in the financial side, but also on the main hours. I mean, you have to have a dedicated team to work to get that CMMI appraised. And it takes about 16 months, 18 months. Uh, I've seen companies that do it in, um, in 12 months, um, but it's, it's, a, it's a great effort. Um, the program also requires a mentor protege coordinator from the protege side. And that person is responsible to report uh, during the project management reviews, which is a mandatory report that requires um, the agency required. Um, Semi-annual report is required by DCMA uh, and the annual report. And these are where um, <clears throat> all the DFAR applied to this program. It's just like any other contract out there where uh, we are overseen by DCMA, uh, making sure, you know, the mentor is utilizing the fundings in the way that it is, they come and they check even by the cent uh, of that contract agreement. Uh, PMR, same thing, we have it with our sponsor agencies every quarter, and the protege has to report it as well as the mentor. Um, the other um, activity is, could be the same person, the same um, protege coordinator, we have bi-weekly calls, once that obviously the agreement is signed and all is approved. <clears throat> and um, so that usually we require the CEO and you know kind of the leadership to be part of those bi-weekly calls uh, because we review every single task that we have under that counter year, you know, assign responsibilities, et cetera. Um, CEO, again, as I said, it's, it's, it's imperative that he or she uh, be involved um, and we have other activities like business development uh, and other uh, things that um, take place that's on demand um, it's about 20 10 to 20 hours a year so it's an average of I would say anywhere from 900 to a thousand hours that the protege will invest um, in the to be in the program to make the program successful and be compliant and complete all the milestones that um that are in the in the agreement. <clears throat> so once that um, a potential company shows, you know, signs of having and meeting those requirements, meet or exceed the requirements, uh, what we do is we start talking about the the main component of what would be the uh, the proposal for the agency. And that is the protege has to come and complete this kind of information. They have to come to us and say, okay, I this is the, here's the problem and the challenge that this agency is having. And here's a solution that I have to, um, to support the agency. Um, also, we, you know, we work on the qualitative and quantitative data. Uh, this is for the protege, uh, basically, to again to come and say, here is the, you know, how this solution is going to support the warfighter. Um, you know, it's going to save money. What is going to save life, time, 
um, in what is going to be the, the mission or the st st strategic directive uh, that um, this solution is going to support and how. Obviously, um, Protege having all this knowledge, they should know who are the end users, what are the pain points they have, and then we determine what are the gaps um, that we need to close through the mentor protege. Again, that's with the technology transfer, um, training, and, and that kind of stuff. And this is an investment from the protege. The solution is um, the protege. It's not IBM. Um, <clears throat> we sign non-disclosure agreements with proteges that have proprietary solutions. Um, and again, we don't we don't provide software, hardware, and we don't develop any products or prototype for any other company because again that's the the issue of ownership so that's 100 uh protege ownership so that's why we don't touch it and this is an illustration uh of the previous slide so we in that <clears throat> previous slide and this one is something that we submit to the agency because we have to uh, prove to them that we have a substantial solution um, that is going to solve a specific problem. So we, you know, this is just for illustration purposes only. So we say, okay, here's your current state. Here's what's going on. And here are the pain points that you have. And here is the future state. If we, if we develop and provide to you this solution, here's how this is going to support and, and benefit the agency. And that's pretty much it. I know it's fast, but <laughs> trying to use the to maximize the time here. <clears throat> I think thank there you. were some questions and sorry, there that were in the chat that um yes, thanks Laura for the presentation. Um okay, so yeah, now's your opportunity to ask Laura your questions. Um, or if there's anything you want her to go over again, um, this is your opportunity to do so. Okay, so the first question is, um, uh, we are pursuing the uh, DOD Mentor Protege program. We are a prime IT solutions provider in Maryland, and we have federal government contracting experience. How do we get started and how do we become a subcontractor partner? Okay, so you're pursuing the mentor project with is that a particular mentor that you're pursuing uh this was uh sherman i don't know if you if you want to specify that and while we're waiting for him to do that i'll go on to the next uh question uh let's see i don't see 8a firms here do you consider 8a Uh, that was it. Uh, that's the other question, Laura. <clears throat> uh, okay, so what, can you repeat that? I, I didn't get it. Eight, eight, what? Eight, eight. Eight, eight. Um, we we can um, we can try that, but this is not IBM. It's more the agencies specifically. I'm gonna mention my client at the Air Force. He's very skeptical, and he. Um, not directly, but he's saying that he's uh, if if an eight a day trying to apply, he wants to see um, a strategic business plan that the company have um, with real example for about five years after mm -hmm. graduating from the eight a day. Okay, thank you. Next question is: Are you able to share um, information for? Oh no, that question's for me. <laughs> Sorry about that. Somebody wants to know if they can um, connect with the other people on this webinar for potential uh, teaming. We generally don't do that for privacy reasons, but by all means, feel free to put your contact information in the chat box. And for anybody who would like to connect with you, um, you know, please do do so. I, I see some people already doing that. If you want to connect, please do that by all means. Um, uh, next question is, our company provides a solution for IBM, uh, but we're not sure if it is relevant to the to DOD. Do we still qualify? That one was from Scott. 
it, it has to be for DOD. Yeah. Because that's that's again that's what the program is all about. This program is is for uh you know Department of Defense to identify <clears throat> small businesses that have solutions for them that they can take to the market. Um, <clears throat> And also, you know, that obviously helped the protege to become a solution oriented rather than just traditional services oriented companies, which, you know, we know we have so many. Um, so they're looking for that unique, you know, small businesses not to depend only on the big guys like IBM and, you know, Raytheon and all those guys. So it, it has to be relevant to the OD. Okay, great. That's That seems to be all the questions. There weren't that many. Um, can you tell us if you have any industry days coming up, Laura? I know at this point, um, that's more for our small business liaison officer. Um, but I was going to say, um, if any of the small business that are here today um, that um, feel like you might meet those requirements, you have maybe, you know, we're looking for that unicorn. <laughs> I have this, you know, a solution, you have ideas, um, please, um, you know, send us an email, uh, maybe, um, Jasmine, you can, you can share with those business, small businesses that reach out to you asking for our content information, uh, mine and Loida. And, you know, that's the, how the conversation start, right? That's, you know, and, and I have to add that when we start talking to small business that, seen as a potential all of this is not a quick process unfortunately it's it takes anywhere from six to 12 months uh, to crystallize a mental protege relationship what i mean is from the beginning getting to know the company evaluation and all that kind of stuff until the agency um the agency cycle is out because that's another thing we don't control that each agency has a cycle a year and uh, so that's why we try to identify proteges and put them in our pipeline and start preparing all the paperwork at, ahead. So when the agency announce the open cycle, we can go and submit our proposal. Because again, the proposal is prepared by IBM um, <clears throat> in collaboration with the, uh, the potential protege. And, um, and is IBM is the prime, we obtain funding, because again, that's why this program is so unique, because it's the only one that has funding, but it's treated with, any, with exactly the same as any other proposal that you have, you have submitted to the federal government. It's, we have to be in compliances, we have to see all the default uh, requirements, and then um, and it, it goes to you know, statement of work, we have to tell the government, this is what what we're going to do, this is why we're doing it, how we're going to do it, when, who, and all that kind of stuff, you know, the statement of work, cost, and all that. So, but again, that's more of um, heavy lifting from, from us because we are the prime as mentors, uh, but the protege put, you know, have to obviously provide a lot of information to us. So if anybody wants to, you know, follow up, um, and you know, wants more information, we will be more than happy to set up a one-on-one -on -one with you, max 30 minutes, um, where we can walk through, maybe you can share with us, you know, hey, I I feel like um, I qualify for this program and you want to explore more, we're more than happy to, to do that. Okay, that sounds good. And you're going to send me the slides, right, Laura? We, we have a Word document that have kind of the summary, yeah. The summary. Okay, yeah, if you could send that over and I'll share that with everybody, that'd be very useful. Um, okay, another question came through. To be part of the Mentor or Protégé program, do we have to have past performance with IBM? And do we also need a security clearance? No, you don't have to have, uh, you know, be a subcontract or, or past experience with IBM. Uh, no security clearance because we this program doesn't require it. We don't provide security clearance through this program either. Um, I guess security clearance is, is if you are intend to be a subcontractor of IBM in the Intel side, which, you know, for everybody, you, you have to have clearances. But other than that, um, no. Wonderful, thank you. Um, 
next question is how do we know what solutions DOD is looking for? And what are the problem statements? I'm not sure what you mean by that. Rashmi, if you could if you could explain that a little bit better. Um, and then while we're waiting for that, I do want to let you know um, that the Maryland Apex Accelerator will be hosting a matchmaking event where you can meet primes and agencies. It's gonna be on October 5th in La Plata, Maryland. So I'll post the link in the chat box. So please do go ahead and register if you are interested and it is targeted to established businesses who are ready to make connections. Okay, Rashmi didn't come back with an explanation. So you can always email me Rashmi later and, um, and then I'll share that with, with Laura. So that's about it, Laura, any, any final, any parting words or tips or advice or anything before we sign off? Um, well, based, yeah, we, um, I know he, he posed that question and, um, I just want to answer even if he's not around, but for the other small businesses, um, when, when you look at, I mean, you need to know your clients. We don't, we don't determine, we don't count to you and say, here's the problem that this, your client has. It's, it's for the small business to do their homework. They need to know their clients they are serving. Uh, have intimate relationship with them so they can identify what the issues, what the problems they have, and then determine how they're going to solution, you know, provide solutions to those problems. We as a mentor, we don't, we don't provide that to the small business. So just in case. Um... All right. Well, I'd like to thank Laura and Lloyda for um, putting this together. We appreciate the information and I will be sending it out to you shortly. And I'd like to thank you all for engaging and asking great questions. And I hope to see you all on a future Apex webinar. So thanks again, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.